Now, the plight of coral in the Great Barrier Reef is well documented, but what about the health of the seagrass meadows? Endangered green sea turtles and dugongs rely on seagrass for food, and our next guest has helped predict how human activity can affect their habitat. Dr Alana Gresh from James Cook University recently won a prestigious Young Tall Poppy Science Award, joining a select few representing Australia's best and brightest young scientists. And she joins us now from Townsville. Dr Gresh, well, congratulations, first of all, on this honour. Tell me a little bit about your work. Thank you very much. Well, my background is in what we call spatial information science. So I use tools such as geographic information systems, which are a bit like Google Maps on steroids. And I use these tools to look at questions associated with the management of Australia's tropical coastlines, especially our habitats and species such as seagrasses and dugongs. And the seagrass meadows, you've been concerned about what's been happening to them? Well, a few years ago, in about 2011, 2012, after we had big cyclone events like Cyclone Yassi and very large rainfall events, especially around the central Queensland region, there was a very large seagrass dieback. And as a result of that, we had quite a few dugong and turtle strandings as well. Seagrass is recovering from that particular event, um, but what my research and my colleagues' research really likes to focus on at the moment is understanding those mechanisms of recovery and how we, as environmental managers and scientists, can help facilitate that recovery into the future. Doesn't it always come back to that the humans are pretty tied up with some of the damage that we've been creating there on the reef? Well, it certainly does. And a lot of my work really focuses on that anthropogenic component of change. So in my previous work, I have looked at, um, I've looked, used spatial models and predictions of where species are, as well as human activities such as coastal development, shipping and poor water quality are, and where these two species and anthropogenic activities interact in space. And from using that information, we can help government to prioritise their management actions at the scale of places like the Great Barrier Reef. So yes, it ultimately does come down to human behaviours, but we do have checks and balances in place in regards to the way that we evaluate um, new developments, such as new ports and new communities, to help minimise that harm. Dr Gresh, I was pretty fascinated with how the seagrass is uh, germinated, how the seeds are passed around. I know people are having breakfast, but can you talk us through uh, the... Uh, <laughs> you know where I'm going, don't you? Can you talk us through just how yes, those seeds are passed around? <laughs> Well, there's two ways that seagrass seeds move around the Great Barrier Reef. And we, one's biotic, so one's pass through animals such as dugongs and turtles. In the and poo. the other is through mechanisms such as the movement of... Uh, yeah, in the poo, yes. Um, and the other mechanism is through the movement of water. So I work with a team of colleagues up in Cairns at James Cook University. And what my focus on the research is, is looking at how water moves and how seagrass seeds are transported in that water. And their component of the research looks at how seagrasses can germinate from poo samples and how far dugongs and turtles can carry those seeds around our environment as and, well. And how far can they carry them around? How far can dugongs carry seagrass seeds around? Yeah, with the poo. You know, dugongs are known to... Yeah, so... <laughs> you keep saying that, not me. So dugongs can do very large, um, large movements. So we estimate that in regards to how long it takes for them to digest these seeds and, and their meals, that it, they can potentially move a seed up to 600 kilometres. Now, the work that we've done using computer models of water movement have found that in, at a particular times of the year, water movement in itself can carry seagrass seeds 900 kilometres, which is an incredibly large distance. Dr Gresh, you're doing great work up there. Thank you very much. Stay with it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, biotic, she said. Yes, I know, but look, forgive me, it's Friday. Yeah, dugongs are good fun and good travellers too. Um, and great work from all of those young scientists we've been um, uh, prioritising for, for interview on yeah. this show. So yeah. uh, that's great stuff. Now, day two of the women's event in the